Well, hello everybody and welcome to the Minecraft plugin tutorial series. Today I'm going to be teaching you something really cool that is the Adventure Library. So this library, let me just go to the official side, is a pretty new addition to specifically Paper API. And what it lets you do, it lets you send messages that have clickable, hoverable, hoverable components and it also supports gradients and a lot of cool stuff. So let me just illustrate how this works on the Board of Justice. We have bucket right here, which does not support it, which is used, I think, by less than maybe 3% of people, so we can just forget about it. Then we have spigot. I do think that spigot could support it, but you have to import it manually and shade it into your own plugin, which is pretty complicated. And then we have paper. By the way, if you guys um, don't exactly know what these three stand for and what is the difference they built on top of each other. So paper builds on the top of spigot, spigot builds on top of bucket. Paper has a native support, I think since 1.16 or 17, I'm not really sure. I think 1.16 has added a support. Anyways, it is pretty modern addition, nevertheless. And I'm gonna teach you guys how to use it using paper so that it does not require you to import anything extra. Everything there is already done for you. and. If you have been following my tutorials, you might have seen that whenever we're dealing with a player, we're sending him a message. Actually, if you if you pay close attention, then this one is marked as obsolete, the default way of sending messages. Hello, right? Instead, what the paper did or, did, or does, uh, <laughs> they let you send something called component or component-like. And this is coming from the Adventure API. So, if we right click an entity in this event, and I'm just gonna, what is this for? Okay, so that one is the exploding logic that we created earlier. Yep. If you're new to this tutorial, please just know that we're building on top of the code from earlier. So, uh, but anyways, you, you will find videos when it comes to listeners, when it comes to events, when it comes to explosions, when it comes to cows, everything has already been covered. So I'm just gonna jump right into it. And that's why we already have a bunch of stuff on here. So if you want to do send a message that say, hello, click me or something, what you can do is just type in player send message and then open up the component API from net.kiori or Kyri. And then there is a bunch of stuff. So I'm just going to leave you to explore all of that. If you go to the main documentation, by the way, link to this is in the description of this video, you're going to see all of this stuff. So just click on text and you'll see a bunch of examples right here, right? And then you, you'll also learn how to send a boss bar, sounds, titles, books, and also player lists, which is pretty cool using this library. This, this library, by the way, it also works on different platforms. So it works on paper, it works on velocity. I think it works also on a sponge, if I'm not mistaken. And it just makes it easier to code your plugin and make it work anywhere else. So back to what I was talking about earlier. If you do want to send a clickable message in the chat, we can just go to the component and just say text. Hello, click me. And then what you can do, instead of adding the color like this one, uh, or using chat colors, like we were used to do, or these special colors like Minecraft used to support, this actually does not work here. You have to use method called color. And then you can either go with text color that um, color. And then you can place an RGB value here directly as the AI suggests, or you can go from a hex string or from these RGB values by different colors, which is really nice. Or if you don't want to bother with this, uh, Kiori has the Adventure API has also provided named text color just like that. And here it looks very similar to what we used to have in our chat color. And now make sure to be careful when it comes to importing all of that because different plugins, they ship a copy of adventure inside of them, which you can see IntelliJ is getting confused. So we have to import the main import. I think these plugins only ship it because they do want to, they also want to support, uh, I think Spigot does not have it manually, but in this video, I'm not going to cover how to import an API and how to ship with an API. This is for another video that I'm going to make in the future. In this video, I'm just going to assume that you want to support modern micro re releases and just paper. So we're going to go with this one and then here, just pick it uh, based on the selection that looks exactly as the chat color used to look. So that's one. You can also do decoration and then the text decoration is actually very straightforward. It just gives you a bunch of options, which you are familiar from the text in them. 
And then I do think that what we can do, okay, just to make it a little bit more readable, I think we can just do hover event. And then there is a hover event which you can just open using hover event dot. And then we want to show and we can just show a text. And this is again a component. So we go to component dot text. And then, hello, I'm a cow or whatever the AI thinks that is appropriate. I'm just going to leave it in here. Oh, uh, just like that. How many brackets do I need? Jesus, four brackets. Okay, that's a massive level. Now, if I do spawn a cow, it does not matter really which animal. This is going to work for all animals. Let me just prove this to you because whatever we created is just happening when any player clicks any entity. So there's no checks whatsoever. And now I can hover up on this and if I click it, Oh, actually nothing happens. Okay. Because we forgot the click event, click event dot. We have click event right here. Change page, open URL, open file, open URL, run command, suggest command. So for example, if you just want to do a run command, you can do something like this help. Now, now if I click it, it's going to show me the help page. However, I also want to show you one trick. So as you noticed, the Hello, I'm a cow is just on one line. If you do want to make it on multiple lines, I do think you can do something like this. If that doesn't work, you can do something like that. Great. So now you can see hello. And then I'm a cow is on a different line. So apparently that one is not what it needs to be there. So just use the backslash and the N to split it. You can also, of course, use the same logic as we had uh, added right here. So color and decoration can be added upon any component and you can also type in comma and you can add multiple upon when it, when it comes to a decoration because that one takes a var argument so you can just add multiple decorations and stack them i think color just goes with one and that's about it when it comes to sending these components this is pretty cool because paper actually implemented a custom um, event that i'm going to show you show this to you so we're just, just going to call it chat listener we're going to make this class implement a basic listener. And then if you've coded in bucket before, you pretty much know that bucket has the event called async chat player or async player chat event, which now has been depreciated by paper. This is still not depreciated in, in Spigot, but the paper actually created async chat event, which works with component. Now, why is that important? Because as I'm later going to teach you, let me just go into the main class real quick and let me make sure that we register the listener. Always make sure to do so. In here, you can actually work with the message, which is a component indeed. And then you can also work with audience. Oh, it's actually called viewers. Okay, great. So you can actually work with viewers. And that one is something called the, the audience or member of an audience. And the audience is pretty cool because you can, you can play a sound, you can send action bar message, even the tap list stuff, titles, boss bar sounds, etc., etc., including of course, sending more messages as a component. Now, if you just do a printout for what the audience is, I'm just going to restart and show this to you. I've typed test and now you can see that the first member of the audience is actually a terminal console command sender. So if you're a normal person, you don't want to import the terminal because that requires you to import NMS. I'm going to cover NMS in a different video, but what you can do, you can just import the terminal, uh, just the, the command console sender, and you can work with that, right? And you can actually check if audience instance of the cons console command sender, and you can work with that there, or simply a player. So you can then uh, remove the console, or you can just remove players and stuff like that, which is really cool. I think that is better than how Bucket treats it. And if you want to go and delete all viewers, you can just get the viewers and type in and hit clear. And this is going to just make sure that if you send a message, it's not going to be shown in the chat and it's not going to be shown in the console either. So paper gives you full control over this. So that is the first part of the adventure API. The reason that I'm not going to go as deep as they do is that I would basically just have to steal and copy their documentation word by word because I'm not the author of this library. And I think they've done a pretty good job. If you read this, it's going to be pretty clear for what it will do. However, for example, as you can see right here, they're using something called append. So on that note, you can, I'm just going to open my board of justice just to explain if you use hello as one component and you give it a color, say red, and then you hit append. 
Okay, this is my handwriting or using my mouse and you type in world as a different uh, component. This one will actually stay in red because uh, paper is copying over these components. So that's just one note that I want to mention. Also, as you can see, append is using something called a key bind, key bind or bind. And this one opens up the key dot jump, which is going to ask this client that you that you have, which control you have when it comes to jumping. And I'm having the, the space right here so that you can actually see this in the game. And this is pretty funny. I can just show this to you what this will do. So as you can see in the game, it actually replaced it with space. And if I'm not mistaken, if I go to option and I go to key bins and I hit jump, say I want to jump with the O letter, which I don't recommend, but whatever. And I go and I right click spider again, you can see it's being replaced instantly. Now, don't worry, okay, paper, paper is not hacking into your client. The way, it the way that it works under the surface is your client is not gonna receive uh, the O letter or the, the space letter. Your client is gonna receive a special, say, JSON string that's going to look like key jump. Okay, so it's going to basically just receive this as a variable and it's going to replace it just on your screen right for every player this is going to be different so that's just something to keep in mind guys make sure that i'll change it back there we go that's the, that's the first part of the components now if you want to take it one step further this i don't think any youtube tutorial actually covered this for now you can use something called mini message and this is something you will find here mini message and then here format so yeah, let me just give you like a very quick example. You can actually go and see this yellow, hello, blue world. And you don't even have to add any anything after this. If I go into game and I type something like this, if you utilize the system, this will actually turn into hello and this will actually turn into world in colors. And you can also use, you can also use gradients and you can also use hover events. So hover show text. And then this is the text in red that's going to be shown. And I'm going to show this how you can implement that in Minecraft right now. So first of all, you basically won if you are using a new, new Minecraft release because that system is actually a part of the API. So you don't have to import any library, etc. And I'm just, I'm just going to be using the chat as an example. So we're going to be basically just replacing messages that people, people type in a chat. So what do we want to do? What do we want to do? We want to first get the message. And if you want to do a printout like this one, you're, you'll actually see that this message is not a component, it's a text component. This is good because text component can be converted into a normal string, thank God, something that we can use in Java, just plain Java. And we can simply cast the message, the component in the event to a text component right here. Now, what you can do, you can type event that message again, but this time we're going to be editing the content of the message, right? And for that, we need something called mini message. Make sure to import this from the right package. There we go. And then just call mini message dot mini message. There you go. API, uh, the AI was not precise in this moment. And here, when it comes to actually using the API, again, you can find the documentation under mini message under API right here. Again, you don't have to use the dependency because paper already has that. And then you can actually type in deserialize right here and you can put your text directly. And so the text is going to be the chat text actually. So mini message dot deserialize. And then how do we get this text? Well, this is what I just shown this to. So event dot get message is how we get the text. The problem is you can simply put this inside deserialize because this requires just a basic string. So we have to convert this component text to a basic string. That's why I converted this into a text component first. And now we can actually type in text component dot something called, I think it's called content. And that one is not gonna work because I messed up the import. Okay, guys, you have to be careful when it comes to imports. Make sure to import it from the net.kiori.adventure.text package. There we go. And now we can hit and press C and it's gonna also complete to content. There we go. So now what we're doing, again, we're grabbing the message in the chat. So I'm grabbing the hello blue, uh, hello world message right here. And this is a component because we're using um, the new event that works with components, then we know that this is a text component, which lets us convert it back into just, just this, okay, this string right here. And this is what we need to parse the variables inside of it. So then we're going to open up the mini message API and then call the serialize method, which is going to convert the string into 
a component. So that one is supposed to be a component replaced text, hopefully. There we go. And here you can simply place the replace text back to the event and the messages should now be transformed. Before I go and I restart the server, I do want to mention if you go to mini message format, you scroll down a little bit, you can see that the mini message web viewer URL is right here. It's a bit difficult to, to, to see. So maybe I'll just send them a message. Maybe they're supposed to make it a little bit bigger. Basically, this one is a really cool resource because what it can do for you, hello world, it can simply simplify, simply simplify making of these messages. So you can just click here and here you can just select the color that you want, hit apply. And as you can see, it's being applied automatically. There's also something called a strict mode, which will let you basically, if strict mode is disabled, you don't have to end the tags, but if the strict mode is enabled, you have to end every single tag like this one. Uh, I think by default, this is disabled. So optionally, you can enable strict mode. I don't recommend it because just not typing them is just less work. However, as you can see, if you type it, it's going to reset the other word back. So if I want to hover something, I just select, for example, this word and I hover and I select, I don't know, this is a hover text. There we go. And then if I hover my mouse over it, it's going to say this is a hover, hover text. If you want to split it, this is not going to work. The backslash and N, it's not going to work. Actually, here you have to use something called BR, BR tag. Now this is going to work. And if you want to add colors, you can. So let me just select the first part. Let me just make it, I don't know, green. And then the other part, we can also select. Make sure to be careful. Don't select the ending quote. And we can select and make this gold. There we go. Now it's supposed to be working. And this one we can just make, I don't know, clickable URL. Yeah, why not? Just go to Mine Academy Project Orient, which is the world's best coding class. I'm just kidding. It's pretty good indeed, but it maybe it's not the world's best, but it's pretty damn good. So let me just go into the game since it has booted. And if I place this in the chat, now you can see it works gloriously. And if I click world, we're going to go into Project Orion and we're going to be starting to learn some amazing Minecraft plugins all together, including a full 30 day money back guarantee, including myself twice per week, jumping in and helping you with your, with your code as I did in this video. However, we can actually speak back and forth. You can unmute yourself. You can share your screen and I can give you a code review in real time. Plus there's over seven weeks of content. So if this video interested you and you want to learn more on how to build amazing advanced micro plugins, click the link in the video description leading to Project Orion homepage, get the course and I'll see you there guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something new and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Thank you.